Hello, and welcome to this Danfoss Drives video. In this video, we will discuss the setup and provide a visual demonstration of the condition-based monitoring feature available to the VLT product line. Thank you for viewing this video. Our goal is to provide you with relevant product information to highlight the features and benefits of various Danfoss Drives products and offerings. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. This video will show you how to set up condition-based monitoring, and how it works. To make things easier to understand, we will use a demonstration setup. A VLT drive is used to control the speed of a motor that is driving a pump, which pumps water in a closed circuit. The setup can simulate various faults. This switch can be used to create a turn-to-turn -turn fault in the motor winding. And this handle will lift the motor mounting plate and create a misalignment, leading to increased vibration levels. Finally, this valve can reduce the water flow, simulating a change in the load of the pump. Now let's look at the programming of the drive using the MCT-10 software. The drive is connected to the USB port. We see in the type code, the LX1X string. This means that the drive has the CBM software license activated. If the drive doesn't have the CBM software license, it is always possible to activate it by purchasing and entering a license code. The latest software version that supports CBM is needed. Once the CBM feature is activated, three new parameter groups will appear. Group 45, 46, and 47. In group 45 you find a cockpit where the individual functions can be activated, and various settings can be made. Also, here you can find the actual values of the monitored parameters. This can be done in subgroup 45-9. Group 46 stores data related to the thresholds, and Group 47 stores data from the baseline measurements. At first sight, this may look complex. But don't worry, you don't need to understand these parameters to get going. You simply use the condition-based monitoring plugin. Basically, there are three steps. Establish a baseline, then generate thresholds based on the baseline measurements, and finally enable the monitoring, then start using CBM. There are two ways to establish the baseline, either through a baseline run where the drive sweeps through a defined speed range, or an online baseline where the drive collects data during normal operation. For demonstration purposes, let's use the baseline run. We start by defining the speed range where we want to perform condition-based monitoring. This range will be divided into 20 steps. We can set the duration of the baseline measurement. A longer duration will usually provide better results. The next step is to tell the drive which sensors are connected. Please note that the winding monitoring and load envelope monitoring functions don't need any external sensors. Only vibration monitoring needs an external sensor. We will now set sensor 1 to analog input 54. We need to set the scaling of the sensor, which can be found either written on the sensor or in the sensor data sheet. In our case, we have a 4 to 20 milliamp vibration sensor, with the measurement range of 0 to 25 mm per second. After setting up the sensors, you are ready to run the baseline. Push hand on and the drive will start running through the 20 speed steps. A progress bar is shown on the LCP and in the MCT10 CBM plugin. Once the baseline is finished, the motor will stop and you are ready to set the threshold values. Please note that this sequence is used for ease of understanding. In practice, once you have a good understanding of your application, you can make the threshold setting before running the baseline. Now, let's look at the threshold settings. We start with the stator monitoring function. For all functions, it is possible to set the reaction time for the alarm in the two warning levels. This is useful to avoid nuisance warnings, for example, during ramp up or other transitory conditions. The baseline measurement is a complete statistical model. You can select whether you will base the threshold on the mean baseline values, on the mean plus minus 3 standard deviation, or on the max min values. For the winding monitoring, just use the default settings for the threshold levels. For the load monitoring, 
we will base the threshold on the mean values plus minus 3 standard deviation. For the alarm level, we will set an absolute value of 30%. The warning levels will be based on the baseline values to which a factor will be applied. Load envelope has both upper and lower thresholds. We will set the upper threshold at 110 and 120% of the baseline and the lower thresholds at 90 and 80% of the baseline. Again, the reaction time can be adjusted. If you click on generate using actual baseline, you will generate the thresholds and you will be able to see them graphically. It's a bit tight, but it looks fine. Now let's set the vibration thresholds. We set the reaction time. We deselect the linear interpolation and choose the step. This means that the baseline values between the 20 speed steps will not be interpolated. This setting is necessary because in the case of vibration, resonances can occur. Resonances are also the reason for basing the thresholds on the maximum and minimum values of the baseline. For the alarm level, we will use an absolute value. This can be, for example, a value recommended by the ISO 10816 standard. This is the absolute limit of vibration, which is considered acceptable in this application. The thresholds will be a factor of the baseline. You can generate the thresholds and check on the graph if everything is OK. In this case we can see that the alarm level is too low, and we want to change that. We set the new alarm level to 20%. That is, 20% of the vibration sensor range, which, in our case, is 25 mm per second. This means the alarm level is at 5 mm per second. Generate again. Check the graph, and everything seems to be OK. You can now activate the monitoring. For each function, you can choose whether you want to get only warnings or want to have the alarms. It is important to know that if an alarm is triggered, the drive will stop running the motor. In most cases, only warnings are used. We will now start the drive and simulate some faults to see how CBM works. The small green X indicates the actual value of the monitored parameter. Let's start with a turn to turn winding fault, simulating a shorted motor winding. The motor keeps running but the drive detects an increase of the stator winding fault signature and will display a warning message. Once the fault is removed, the warning will disappear. Now let's check out the load envelope monitoring function. The valve reduces the water flow through the pipe, thus reducing the load. This can be seen on the graph. The drive displays a low load warning. For checking the vibration monitoring function, the handle is pushed down, creating a misalignment between the motor and the pump. This will increase the vibration level. Have you noticed the shape of the threshold curve? The explanation is that vibration depends on the speed of the motor. The CBM function is unique because it correlates speed with the vibration level. You will have different vibration thresholds at different speeds depending on the baseline measurement. This is also useful to find resonances which occur in some applications.
try out the Danfoss CBM functions and let us know how they work for your application, and any new features we could add that you would find useful. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Danfoss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ds.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ds.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is available on our North American website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com.